In this video, I'll show you how to change your IP address on a Windows 11 machine. This guide also works for Windows 10. So join me, Mark, a network engineer with 26 years experience of working for ISPs, managed service providers, and corporations. With that, let's get started. Let's first ask the question, why would you want to change your IP address to be a fixed IP address? Well, some of the reasons are that you might be running a media server or running a file server or NAS system that you want to uh, have a fixed IP address for, or you simply just want to have a fixed IP address for your workstation or, or laptop. So first off, what we need to do is head down to the search part at the bottom of the screen and the toolbar and start typing control panel. And we can see control panel there, so we can scroll up and click on that one. Now, we're, once in control panel, we should see it with these small icons like this. If you don't, just simply come up to the view by and select small icons. Then we want to select network and sharing center. And then we want to go on the left hand bar and say change adapter settings. So here we can see that we've got the ethernet or LAN adapter and the uh, Wi-Fi adapter and also the Bluetooth. So we're focusing today on the uh, LAN adapter where we're going to be changing the IP address. So first of all, let's view our current status and our current IP address. So if you right click and click status, okay, and then click details. So we can see our current IP address is this one here, which is 192.168.116.131. And we can also go above and see DHCP. So it's a dynamic uh, assigned IP address and that's yes. So that's been assigned dynamically by the system as not a fixed IP address. So I'm just gonna jot that down in my list here. So let's go to the notepad. So then a little bit of preparation as you can see. So 131, so our current IP address is 192.168.116.131. So let's pop that in. Perfect, pop that down there. Okay, and then let's close this. And let's go into properties now where we can change the IP address. And we want to select IPv4 from here. So double click there. And you can see that it's currently set to obtain an IP address automatically, obtain a DNS server address automatically as well. So what we're gonna do is slide this across here and just close these two down. Go back to details here. So we can see that it's also a slash uh, 24 subnet. So what we could do is come into our subnet calculator. Don't worry, it's not that daunting. I know it looks a bit scary at the moment, but we'll go through it. It's not a problem. Um, like I say, um, network engineer for 26 years. So this is something we've used pretty much all my career. So let's have a look. So we've got, um, we know our IP address here. So if you bring that up, it is, it's part of this range here. So 192.168.116.131. Uh, uh, so we know it's a slash 24 as we saw before with the 255.255.255.0. So if we go into here and select 168.116.0, which is the subnet, and click on that, you can see here that the actual subnet ID is 116.0, so that's not usable, nor is the broadcast address, which is 192.168.116.255. So our scope, if you will, for our subnet, we're allowed to use 192.168.116.1 right up to 254 here. So now let's go into the terminal. So come down to the bottom of the screen here. And we can right click on the Windows icon and click Terminal Admin. It's going to give you the option here, the allowed to make changes to say yes to that. You can bring that up and go put that sort of to the side here. I think that works quite nicely. Okay. So another way to view our IP address or IP settings is to do type the command IP config here. So again, we can see our IP address, as we saw before, our, our subnet mask, which matches here, two, uh, 255.255.255. Our default gateway in this case is .2, so that would be our router. So now we know our subnet and our IP address, we wanna make sure that we now select an address that's not in use uh, for our fixed IP address. So what we can do is type the command uh, ARP or ARP space dash A and press enter. 
So what we can see here is these are the IP addresses that we're currently in use in that range. So these, these four IP addresses, so we see that broadcast network and dot one dot two, that's our, our router here. And we can ping that. So this is a command that basically is a uh, UDP command that says, are you there? So that's what it's saying. So it's going to say it four times to this device, are you there? So 192.168.116.2. And we hope the route is there, so let's find out. Okay, so we can see that it replies, and you can see that it replies in sub one millisecond to us. Okay, so we can see here um, what IP addresses we've got. So we don't want to overlap or use an IP address that's in use, otherwise you'll have duplicate IP addresses and that will cause you network issues. So in this case, um, let's bring up our neat notepad. So just, obviously being in networks um i tend to uh, try and make things easy when breaking up a, a subnet so in this case i've set a huge uh, static range um of uh, 100 to 199 and the idea behind that is that visually if you see anything in the it will have dot 100 in the last octet here you're going to know that's a, a fixed ip address as opposed to if you just pick one at random, the next one in line. So it just means, it just makes it nice and easy. Got a, Probably got a slight bit of OCD here that I like things very organized. So I have that range. And then and then in that case, anything else you know is being signed by the router and is a DHCP or dynamic IP address. Okay, so with that said, let's make our system with a fixed IP or static IP of .100. Okay, so let's ping it first, just to make sure that it does not respond, because we don't want to, like I say, set a duplicate IP. And we can see here, destination host unreachable. So it's not pingable at this current stage. And that's perfect, that's a valid test. So let's head back into the control panel. So come down to here, and I'll pick up the control panel again. So now we're in the ethernet adapters and I've got to here just by obviously going under the LAN uh, settings here under status and into properties. So IPv4. So now we're gonna change it from automatic to be a fixed or static IP address. So use the following IP address. And we said, we're gonna use, let's just bring that up below. I don't know if that works, kind of works. So we're gonna use one nine, 2.168.116.100 as our fixed or static IP address. It's a class C um, subnet or slash 24, so it's 255.255.255.0, that's fine. And our default gateway, as we saw from our output up here, is this one here, 192.168.116.2. So that's our router. So I'll put in 192.168.116.2. Uh, so DHCP addresses, what we can do is you can use, um, you can add these yourself, is the Google DNS server. So 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. Okay. So now what we can do is click OK and okay again and you can see it's just getting an ip address and now we've got internet access again it flicked to internet and click close to that so let's come down into here let's do a valid test let's do a ping of dot 100 and now it's responding and then we can follow that by uh, typing ip config Press enter, and now we can see our IP address has now changed to 100. Our subnet mask has stayed the same at, two, at uh, slash 24, and our uh, default gateway, our router, is still dot two. Um, what we can also do is come into here, check the status, and check details. And now we can see uh, slightly changed, obviously, that view. We've got the uh, IP address that we changed to. Um, the uh, default gateway, but now we can see our DNS servers is Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. And we can also see that the DHCP server is now set to no. 
and that means that it's a fixed IP or now static IP address and this IP address will not change. So just to be sure, um, obviously being a network engineer, let's just check, uh, I could ping the uh, router. And yes, I can. So we can also check the ARP table. It may not appear because it's gonna take a little bit of time, but let's do uh, ARP dash A and see if it's there. It's not there yet. I didn't expect it to be, but uh, that's fine. So we can click and type exit to that and close that down. And uh, close this down here. So if you wanna set it back, and uh, let's say you want to go to do that, that's fine, that's no problems. So let's uh, go into properties, um, IPv4, double click on that one, and simply set obtain an IP address automatically and we can keep we could either keep these uh, DNS servers the same um, I will be doing a video on which DNS servers are preferred for actual internet performance which I'll be linking in the description below which is coming up on the channel so do check that out um, but we could also set that up to obtain that automatically so let's do that as well and then click OK so now we can see here it says no internet access as it just reassigns uh, itself or changes back to a, a uh, automatic DHCP IP address and it's done that now. Um, so we can go back into details and you can see actually, if I bring up my notes, our current IP address before we made the change was 131 and now we've got that 131 IP address back again. So we can click close to that, confirm it if you want because confirmation is the key. Let's go to there, click O. Oh yes to that slide that in and let's type ip config just like that and bang there we go so we're back on 192.168.116.131 and one thing i did forget to check or to show go into details and we can see the dhcp is now set to yes which means it's now been automatically assigned so in this video, like I said, we, what we've seen is changing our IP address from a uh, DHCP uh, dynamic IP address to a uh, fixed IP address or static IP address and then changing it back. And we saw a bit about DNS as well on there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.